Alright guys, just a quick video. We, I know I did one before on a nice pretty alliance layout. Um, we're just, we're about halfway through this. We got a bunch of people who haven't moved yet. But, this is what my new alliance layout looks like. It's similar to what we did before. We have the fortress here. I'm right next to it. Um, we have our power players around the gates. Gates being the most critical, so all my heavy hitters, people with good rally, mostly rally capacity, more than troops. Um, because you want people who can start a good march and be a really close, short run to the gates. So I don't mind sending my troops to Demon or one of the other guys. I don't mind sending my troops for a long walk, you know, even if it's the other side of the gate. Because no matter how long my walk is to another person, once we attack the gates, it's the distance from him to the gates that's really important. And then how fast do my troops return? My troops are going to return the same amount of time every time from the gates. Um, so that's a good layout. and I could go into explaining that more. Basically, the fortress is here, the gates there, the corner, once you place your fortress in the four corners of the box that it gives you, you want to put your towers. So I have one here, we have one here, and this is the way to maximize your space. I have one back here, and the last one is over here. So we have plenty of room to expand. We got a bunch of members, like I said, that haven't moved yet. Um, that's always a challenge. Now, when you do your layout, the very far edges, nobody needs to get to the Hall of Heroes on a regular basis. And the warehouse, you're sending food, but you have a max limit. There's only so many troops you send a day. So that should always be in the corner so your members can be congregated around the center. The same thing with the mine. Mine should be in the far corner. We don't want to take up precious center space with stuff like that. Now maybe I can move it later once everybody moves in. I probably won't move anything other than the mine maybe. You know, but generally when you send your troops to the mine, you're going to send them there and go to bed. So if it takes, you know, a couple of minutes extra to get there, it takes a couple of minutes. It's no big deal. I we got a camp right here. And that's about it. Everybody's got to stay in nice, neat lines. You don't waste space in the middle. You always have three spaces around a tower. So we have this rock here in the middle of the place that we wanted to land. So I actually figured out where I was going to put the tower, marked three spots over for where the gates are going to be, and then three spots over for where the fort was going to be. So I based my whole layout based on this one rock right here in the corner. Um, you know, and then, you know, the other four corners were pretty clean. Uh, you do run into a little space problem this way with crowding to the very edge of the alliance. You also have to kind of get that right so people are here just inside the green border. Because if you're half in and half out, you're not going to get the alliance benefits as far as... Um, you know, enhance enhancements on all your stats. So you have to make sure anybody that's in the alliance is fully in the lines. Uh, this spot here I'm saving for another large member. We originally had like a um, uh, an ore mine in here or silver mine, I forget. So we had a way for that to come out. We cleared one, another one cleared right next to it. Um, so we decided to put four camps here so nothing else will respawn in there. We want somebody with decent strength to be in there. So we're kind of saving that spot for one of the members who hasn't moved yet. Or we might be doing a merger. There's a lot of options open. But pretty much nice straight lines. Fills my ACD nicely. Um, everybody's in line. It takes a lot to get everybody in line. I don't even want to talk about that part. It's very stressful. It's been going on since um, probably we're about a 
day and six hours since we started the move. Um, not too bad. I, I've done it faster. I've done it worse. I like the way the layouts come out. So it's just a nice all-around layout. This is the way we want it where all our power people are around the gates. You know, everybody here has really strong power. Um, I like the effect of the dragons all flapping their wings together. That's probably the coolest animation in the game. These guys are a little out of sync. But it's just a very cool layout. You know, so you line around the gates, you line your power hitters. Because don't forget, you have eight spots around the gates. Not all eight people are on all the time. You know, if you get half of them on, that's four marches you could run. That's enough to win the gates every time. And then you have people, the next highest people, like 100 million power or above, around the second line, right? So now you have, I don't know how many we have here. So, Patron is the corner. So we got one, two, three, four, five, ten, four, and four. So we have 18 people in the second box around the center of the gates. So it's almost like a bullseye target, even though it's square. Like this is your bullseye, this is your 50 points, this is your 20 points. So you just plan everything around there, and then after that people can move in as they see fit. Why am I next to the fort and not next to the gates is A, I'm actually not the most powerful, and B, when you do the specter raid, it's important to get into the fortress so you can do a um, mega rally. So it's important that I'm close to there, and I'm really I'm one box away from the gates. It's not really critical. If nobody else shows up and I have to run rallies myself, I'm only losing a little bit of time by having to travel that extra box. Anyway, just wanted to show the layout where we're at. Um, like I said, we do have a bunch of players that haven't moved yet, so this should fill in nicely. When you do have things like this mine here. All right. So usually you want to. Actually, this is bad. This camp should actually be here because if somebody ports in and goes right up tight against these two, see if you come in here. Let me let me show you. I want to actually port. But if I go to port in and I want to port myself there. I'm going to be out of line. See the way it's not even with the other players? So when you do camp, this camp should really have been here. Because if it was there, now nobody's going to be able to port in and go into the wrong spot. And that's what I try and do. I try and let's see what this camp is. I did that over here. This is my camp. Because you got you know, a wheat field here. So nobody's going to be able to move into this spot because my camp is here. Had my camp not been there, somebody could have come in and been off a little bit. And it might not seem like a big deal to be off one box, but that gets worse and worse and worse the more people that come in. Everything's out of whack. Um, it's taking you longer to do things. It's taking you longer to reinforce people for specter raids. You know, Reinforcing people for the specters is critical. So if you're all tight together and you want to go reinforce somebody, you could get to them fast and easy this way. If you don't do it this way and you're spread out all over the place, you just can't get your troops there in time. It takes too long. So anyway, hope I explained that. Um, if you have questions, leave a comment down here. Don't forget my castle giveaway is when I hit a thousand subscribers. I was at 480 the last time I looked, so we're getting up there. I think I'm going to do another castle giveaway at um, 600 subscribers, because I do have five castles on that server. Um, they're not, there's only one level 30, and then it goes, you know, there's a whole range of them. They are messier castles. I really grew them as farms. Um, you know, but it's a free castle, you know, so if you want to get into 
uh, one of the other lands if you want a good jump start on your life you might have to do a little work on the other ones I'm also working on if anybody knows a good way of raffling off a uh, castle all the apps that I see are based on going through comments on a video I don't see any good apps for picking people out of your subscribers uh, I'm new to this I just don't know I might just have to pick two random numbers and do it that way so I will post the rules you know before I get close to the first raffle uh, just so you know there'll be there'll be further announcements on how exactly the technical details on how I'm going to pick somebody what happens if the person I want to give it to doesn't want the account if they're a subscriber for some of the other content that I have I'll be posting all of that I'll update the original video and I will post another video once I get all the actual final rules and I know how I'm doing this just want to be a hundred percent clear um, I know it's a contest so we'll figure it out together all right have a good day and let me know if you have any more questions. I do know I got a request for some more sharpshooter stuff. Uh, the Cutlass Capers, the Pirate's Wit. I know people want to see that, so I'm going to be doing that shortly. I haven't even finished it myself. I will probably just start it over. And it's going to be a little hard because throwing the swords on a computer is difficult. I may have to figure out something else for that. But we'll get there. If anybody else wants any other content, just let me know. I will take requests and do the best I can. All right. Love you guys.